And when you add these three things to a feminine woman, it makes for a really good relationship partner. All right. And the first one is emotional self-control and maturity. And so there seems to be a misunderstanding that because being emotional is a feminine trait based on these estrogen levels, having a lot of emotion is something that's feminine, then that must mean that women are going to have no self-control with their emotions and, and be emotionally immature. And that is not true. Okay. A woman, in, the, in an ideal sense, you want a woman who has high emotions but has good levels of self-control because she's emotionally mature, all right? She's developed. How do you develop emotional maturity? Accountability, all right? And it's one of those things that a lot of women are lacking today, and it's very unfortunate because accountability is what causes a woman to question her behavior and question her reactions and learn to handle these emotions that are happening in her brain and in her body in productive and healthy ways. So an emotionally mature person has can have a lot of emotion, but they handle that emotion in productive and healthy ways versus in erratic and dramatic ways. Okay. So a woman who is emotionally mature and demonstrates emotional self-control and learns how to have an outlet that's healthy for all these emotions she's having, that is a really good match. You don't want to look for a woman who can't be emotional or be in her emotions. That's somebody potentially with something going on that's wrong with her in her brain. She might have difficulty pair bonding with you. She might have difficulty having that attraction that you desire from a woman and particularly in the sexual arena, she may, that's the person who might end up becoming that asexual partner deep down into a marriage when she gets her needs met. So that's a woman who doesn't have good emotions and doesn't have high emotions and doesn't experience emotions. That's a red flag, not, not a good thing. So you don't want to cons confuse the two things. A woman who is not afraid to have emotions and has them and has extreme feelings of being happy or sometimes feelings of being sad will cry during a movie, you know, those sorts of things, right? Like these are not bad qualities. Those are feminine qualities. But if she's losing her mind and being emotionally erratic because she's emotionally immature, that's a bad thing now, right? She's taking that feminine behavior and turning it into a bad thing due to a lack of maturity. All right. Being erratic and full of drama is not a feminine trait. That's just an immature trait. Okay. And so you need to be able to lead your woman into that idea if she doesn't have it already. But more importantly than that, because you're not trying to change some woman out there, you want to pick a woman who has experiences and accountability in her life where she can have this emotional self-control and can be a good, healthy partner, right? Despite the emotions that she's having. The next thing is delayed gratification. I never get, I want to one, one day where I can, one day, one day where I can go on the lake. Now you're going to text everybody. I am, and that is, a, I want to go on the so it's kind of related to the first one, but slightly different. And that's a woman who can delay the gratification and wait for the reward, so to speak. Okay. Because women are in their emotions and in the imagination part of their brain, uh, oftentimes a lot more than a guy, they can want that reward and be like a little girl who wants a reward, right? Uh, right. She wants, she wants the thing, you know, and, and she wants it right now. And that's okay to want that. But a healthy woman with intelligence, because this is actually a marker of higher IQ, higher, higher IQ or higher intelligence is the ability to delay gratification. Your success or failure in life arguably comes from your ability to delay reward, delay gratification, to be able to do hard things so you can reap a reward later or know when to do that. You can't be successful if you don't have that skill. And people who are constantly reward-driven and they need it right now, 
they tend not to do well and they tend to be less successful. And women who are like that tend to be problematic in relationships. All right. Because if she doesn't get her way, doesn't get it right now, doesn't get that immediate gratification. What's she going to do about it? Pout, cry, stomp her feet, create drama. That would be the worst, the least of your problems. Okay. How about she's going to get that gratification through somewhere else? So a woman who is not in that very intelligent, um, not doesn't have good sense and control over emotions and can't delay, delay gratification, she's the one who's going to cheat on you. Did you cheat on me? I was ovulating. You don't know women. You haven't grown up with women. My, my body, I'm just listening to my body. We are chemically created. I have this chemical thing in me where I have to reproduce my body. I'm just listening to my body. You know, um, I was at the club. There was a man there, cute, a couple drinks in. I was like, my body was like, reproduce. What are you talking so you're blaming science for you cheating? Yes, on I know. She's the one who's going to step out of line, step out of pocket, do things that are not good for your relationship. She's she's the one who, when she has, you know, if you guys are married and she has access to money and stuff, that she'll spend that money when she feels like it without, even if you, you know, you don't agree, right? Like this is this is where a lot of really destructive behavior can happen happen simply because she's not willing to make a sacrifice and stick to a goal and, and forgo the immediate reward. You know, she's not willing to take on short-term hardship to get the reward later. This can be a real problem in your relationship. So make sure you're selecting someone who has a history of delaying gratification. Look for those signs of her having done that in her life, her having worked for a while, maybe towards a goal that was, somewhere far off in the distance. That's a good sign, a good green flag. All right. And the third thing I want you to look at is selfish versus selfless behavior. Did a little bit of shopping. What? For myself. There's kind of an idea that's out there that, that tr women who are feminine, are selfless, that they'll be willing to sacrifice themselves for others and serve others. And there is an element of being a good caretaker and being good, uh, good at being in service to others and being sympathetic to emotions and all that with this estrogen profile, right? So that is a feminine thing. However, there are very selfish but feminine women out there, okay? Being selfish or selfless is not exclusively a masculine or feminine trait. That's just a human trait. And so her being a good wife material means that she's able to be selfless and not always being selfish, all right? And this can trick you because you can have a girl with a lot of feminine qualities, has a beautiful voice, is polite and proper, and looks hot, cares about her appearance. She's sympathetic to others and nur seems nurturing, but she's actually very, very selfish and maybe very egocentric and maybe even a little narcissistic. And you can run into this where a woman has this narcissism but she's also very feminine and that can be very, can throw you off because it doesn't, those two don't seem to go together. And so you'll look at how good she can make you feel by being feminine, neglecting the fact that she's completely selfish and everything she does might have a selfish motive. So you have to be careful there. Feminine behavior doesn't necessarily mean she's not selfish. Okay. And she can fool you or trick you with that one. So you need to consider selfish versus selfless behavior. Not to say that she never does anything for herself or, you know, that would be unhealthy too, right? If she never had a goal for herself or a standard or a boundary. So she, you know, she didn't take care of herself in a healthy way. Uh, it was always codependent or something, sacrificing for others. That, that would be bad, right? So there's an unhealthy a uh, level of selflessness somebody could have in a relationship in their relationships. But all in all, though, you know, the ability to care for others and support others and delay the gratification of some of her own goals or ideas is a very good quality to have in a relationship that's good wife material that's not necessarily 
a masculine or feminine thing because there's a lot of men out there who are also selfless. Okay. Those men volunteer to go fight, go to war, work in dangerous jobs, right? Sacrifice nights out, sacrifice pleasure to achieve goals for their family, to provide for their kids. Men can be very selfless too. And it's a mask, you know, and they're masculine when they're doing it. But, and so if you're a man, especially if you're a man who has the selfless trait and who's willing to sacrifice for others, you have to be careful there. You have to be careful that you don't get thrown off your purpose. You have to be careful that you don't let people step all over your boundaries. But when it comes to relationship selection, you got to be careful that you pick somebody who also is selfless. If you're being selfless and you want to take care of a woman and you pick somebody who's selfish and who's only interested in being taken care of and isn't interested in being a compliment to your life for what you're doing, she will be an energy drain and she will drain your energy and your efforts and it's not going to be a good time. All right. And so that is something to consider is the selfishness versus selflessness. And don't be fooled by the feminine woman who might be a little narcissistic either. All right. She might exhibit these traits, but then it ends up being a selfish person. It's not something you want. Now, don't forget to click that link and join my community at School for Free, where you can get a lot of information that's going to help benefit your life with your mindsets, your goals, your inner game, and your handling of women and relationships.